Today, we're going to be doing a tier list. As you can see right here, we have all 24 teams that have qualified for the Copenhagen Major, and I'm going to be ranking all of their stickers based on how likely I am to invest in their major stickers. This is obviously under the assumption that these are going to be borderless. Of course, we don't know that just yet, and if they do end up being bordered, this list will be entirely different. I'll definitely have to make a new updated list after we actually get that bordered sticker design, but it's so hard to judge before you know what the border design is going to be. It's so much easier to judge border list stickers because obviously they're just going to be the team's logo or whatever so in this video today we're going to be going over that going to be giving you guys my top picks uh, or at least my predictions for which stickers i think would uh, potentially perform best investment wise from this major um, but first just want to mention real quick if you are looking to sell any of your cs2 items for cold hard cash or crypto or any other payment method hit me up on twitter first link in the description below i'm buying almost anything and everything for between 85 and 90 percent buff and i can help you get a quick safe efficient cash out uh and you help support me my channel my content as well with that being said let's get right into this so <clears throat> something so important you have to keep in mind uh there's a couple of things obviously with borderless stickers you have the appearance is it a cool logo uh do people care about the team does the team have a big fan base uh is it unique borderless sticker or how many borderless alternatives are there uh and the color of the logo itself are all very very important you know craftability um stuff like that these are important but we have to keep in mind uh we're gonna be starting off in the trash tier is logos that are ugly with teams that people don't care about that much and they also have a ton of borderless alternatives already those are going to be bad investments those are gonna be something you definitely want to stay away from and even if this wasn't just investments even if this was just stickers like do i like the sticker or not ents would easily be the trash tier i hate this logo i hate this sticker it's not going to be a good investment it's going to be the cheapest sticker from this uh set almost certainly you know whether it's borderless or bordered or whatever nobody's really going to care about it uh it's going to be you know the simple 10x investment from fano he's going to be buying them up and trying to pump them or whatever maybe who knows um but i think it's pretty trash i would stay away from it altogether you know whatever i don't know if that's the only trash tier I think the next um, logo that people are definitely going to turn towards towards that trash tier uh, is going to be Mongols, but I think I would maybe put Mongols towards the bottom of D tier, maybe like somewhere in between. I don't know if we can throw in an extra tier in here real quick, um, add a row below. Um, we're going to put this one just in its kind of a league of its own. We'll just call this Mongols or whatever, um, because I don't think Mongols is quite as bad as Ents because Ents does already have more borderless alternatives. Uh, and Mongols, I know they got like the color change, like Mongols was silver for Paris and now it's gold. Uh, for Copenhagen so maybe that differentiates it a little bit Mongol still has a pretty trash logo and this is a duplicate it's a second uh, borderless sticker now if this does end up being borderless but I don't think it's as bad as Ents but I also think uh, hey I, I did end up buying a couple Mongols uh, stickers from Paris maybe I regret it maybe not whatever I don't know they're just so cheap uh, it was kind of enticing but I also get why it's kind of like a trash logo sticker whatever but uh, who knows I don't think it's quite as bad as Ents but I do think these are probably the two worst um, from this collection for sure now <clears throat> In the D tier, I just kind of have this boring tier of all the teams that uh, we see at every single major that don't really have that cool logos. Yeah, they might have a big fan base. Yeah, they might be popular. Maybe their sticker ends up doing okay. Um, but it just seems kind of hit or miss uh, depending on what these teams, uh, how their sticker does well or not at every major. Um, you know, teams like Navi, uh, teams like Vitality, FaZe. Um, we even have, do we have any more here that are just like way, way, way down there? Um, I think Heroic, I, I really like their sticker from Paris since it was a unique sticker sticker um, but now they're using the same logo at Copenhagen I think heroic takes a big hit and is a definitely a team I'm staying away from um, complexity not a team that's that exciting to me g2 same type of thing here even though I think g2 has a cool logo big fan base or popular exciting all that um, I'm definitely staying away from it as far as investment wise if it ends up being borderless again pain gaming another one that hey I know they're popular I know people kind of like the logo I know the the logo the p obviously has craftability especially with the new um, sticker updates and stuff like that but uh, you know, it's just not for me. I'm going to be sticking away from it. Honestly, I would probably put pain towards the top of this group since it does have a letter at least, and it has some craftability phase as well, um, in there. Um, but yeah, these other stickers are just kind of random. Vitality will, their sticker will do okay. Uh, ROI wise at some majors, it'll do bad. Navi's it'll do okay. Sometimes it'll do bad. G2, it'll do okay. Sometimes it'll do bad. I, I don't really have a rhyme or reason why. Um, but just understand this is if borderless, the fourth Navi borderless, the fourth vitality borderless, the fourth G2 borderless, like complexity logos, pretty boring and uninspired. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't really know. I'm just not that excited about these. 
Um, so I'm, I'm definitely staying away from them and I definitely see um, reasons why. But there are some teams that have multiple borderless stickers that are a little bit more interesting. A team like Furia. Yes, they have a borderless sticker. This would be their fourth borderless sticker, but their borderless sticker ends up being a little different at each major. And I don't know if that's Valve's doing or they're doing or whatever, but you can tell the difference between the Stockholm Furia and the Antwerp Furia and the Paris Furia. So um, if they continue on that trend and Copenhagen ends up being a little bit different, yes, it's the same logo and I don't think it's that crazy or inching or whatever, um, but it's a pretty cool logo, but uh, it is just kind of the same old same old but maybe it'll be a different color hollow effect shiny effect who knows whatever um so i do think that puts furia a little bit of a touch above and they're just kind of like popular and stuff like that um i think mouse is another one of these where i'm staying away from the mouse uh, you know many people would maybe have it higher up on this list because the mouse sticker has this huge following and huge fan base and whatever but this is gonna be the third borderless mouse and they the first two look exactly the same and we saw the paris mouse absolutely um was devastating for the stockholm mouse you know it just cratered and it's really wiped out some of the gains um, the Paris mouse hasn't been doing as good since then. The, even the the, uh, the capsules um, from Stockholm with the mouse sticker and it haven't been doing as well since. It is a uh, it is a big deal and it does matter. And a third one's going to be even worse, but. It is still Mao's. People do still love it. And, it, uh, you know, I don't know if the hype has died down enough quite yet to bring Mao's into that D tier or some of these other teams. Um, but personally, I'm definitely going to be staying away from the Mao's sticker, but I understand it should probably be a little bit higher up. Um, then, I, you know, you have some other teams too that I, I think they could have some hype, even though um, they're maybe not that exciting. Eternal Fire, it's a dragon. It's cool. You know, Year of the Dragon, whatever. Yes, we already have an Eternal Fire borderless, but maybe there's a little something there. Maybe there's a little juice, a little sauce. I don't know. Team Spirit, especially now with Donk. Uh, yes, Team Spirit does have. I believe two other borderless stickers right now, but I, they, they do look different. Um, and again, maybe this Copenhagen one will look different as well. I don't know, but uh, Team Spirit's going to be uh, one of the top teams at this tournament. They're going to have Donk. They're going to be exciting. They're going to have a big fan base. I can see this one maybe doing okay and maybe standing out a little bit. Um, and then I don't think there's anything else uh, that I want to put into this tier. We start to move up into some of the more stickers that I would definitely be excited about um, for different reasons. We have all the new teams um, that are going to be qualifying for this tournament that do not have borderless stickers already, like Ecstatic, like Saw, like Amcall. I don't really think any of these are that interesting or that exciting, uh, but you do have to keep in mind, especially if we get this borderless sticker set that has a ton of duplicates, the unique stickers are going to stand out in a good way. And even if they do end up being cheaper or not as uh, exciting at first, if they remain unique for the long run, um, they're going to perform perform well uh, in terms of ROI. They're going to perform better than the other one. It doesn't mean they're going to do well because we don't know what Copenhagen is going to do as an investment, but they're going to have a chance of doing better um, than some of the other stickers. You know, you'd much rather own an Ecstatic if it's unique than Ents, even if you think Ents has a way cooler logo than Ecstatic or whatever. Um, that's just kind of how this thing works. It's going to end up with a lower supply overall and the demand, you know, if people want an Ecstatic logo, they're going to have to come to the Copenhagen set it just makes a lot of sense and it just lowers the overall supply. So um, I don't really love any of these three logos, Ecstatic, uh, Saw, or Amcall. I know people are saying Amcall is like the McDonald's fries ass logo and I think that's kind of funny. Maybe you could do some McDonald's fries crafts or something. I know people are saying Saw could be like the, the godsend of um, this set and hey, Godsend has done very, very well. If Godsend has been a good sticker, I could kind of see it, but I also don't think it's like Godsend either. Maybe it's like a simpler version of Godsend. I don't know. I don't really see anything that interesting or exciting or craftability about these three logos or whatever. So who knows? We'll have to keep it in mind. I think Legacy is another one that's okay. I know some people say they really think this logo and design is cool. I don't really think it's that cool. I'm not really that interested or excited about it. Who knows? Whatever. It just kind of meh to me. Um, then we have some other stickers that I think are kind of cool, but are duplicates. Um, we have stuff like Apex, which is obviously already in Paris and already has a huge supply, but it's a decent logo. I could see it maybe doing okay. I would maybe even move this down to like the top of C tier um, since it's already in there. Um, we do have teams like Virtus Pro, which I love their logo, and Virtus Pro, the only other sticker is in Stockholm, and obviously Stockholm has had the lowest supplies, um, so it might actually be impacted by this the least least. Um, and I just think the Virtus Pro logo is really cool and they could do some different stuff with the hollow effects. I don't know. I would kind of be um, maybe inclined to pick that one up. And then you have Imperial as well, which the green uh, looks very, very cool. And yes, we already do have this in Antwerp. Um, but again, Antwerp does have lower supplies than Paris. So, you know, I, I would be more uh, inclined to buy something like Virtus Pro or uh, Imperial than something like Apex, which already has a huge supply from Paris. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I could see those two logos, even though they are duplicates, they're just two X duplicates, not like three or four. I could still see them doing okay. I could see myself maybe um, leaning towards that. Then 
Into the A tier, I have Cloud9. Um, yes, Cloud9 is a duplicate. Yes, they are in Antwerp, but we've seen that the demand is definitely there for that Cloud9 Antwerp stuff. Cloud9 has a huge fan base. It's a cool logo. They're iconic. Um, people love Cloud9. And uh, even though it is a duplicate, again, this is a duplicate that I could see myself potentially investing in or putting some money into because I think the hype and the demand is going to be there. It's blue, cool logo. All the kind of checked all the boxes except being unique at this point. Um, but like I said, the the uh, Antwerp one did so well that I think there could still be some demand, some hype, some sauce um, behind the Copenhagen Cloud9, even if it ends up being pretty similar. Um, but I think it would be at least a little bit interesting. Then I have the two um, two of the unique uh, stickers that I am the most excited about in this set. I have the uh, Nine Pandas, which I think has a ton of craftability, especially now with the new update where you can rotate and move stuff around and everything. I know people have already started making like 69 crafts and you can put two of them together and move them sideways. You can do whatever. It's a panda. It's cute. It's funny. It at least stands out. It's at least different. It's at least a interesting logo as compared to Saw and Ecstatic and Amcall. Um, yeah, you could say it's ugly or weird or stupid or whatever, but some people are going to think it's cute or funny or cool. Um, and I think it does have some craftability and some genuine demand there. Uh, and then Mavi Star Koi, um, I think it's kind of an ugly logo. It's kind of weird. It's blocky. It's a square, but it's different. It stands out in this sea of other logos. Um, you also have Koi, which is obviously a huge brand, huge fan base. Uh, and we've already seen the Mavi Star Riders from Stockholm be kind of an ugly, weird looking logo that did very, very well in terms of demand and ROI and stuff like that. So I could see Mavi Star Koi potentially doing the same uh, and again I at least think it stands out which could make me inclined to buy again I would probably lean towards Mavi Star Koi and Nine Pandas over Cloud9 just because they're unique um, and they would be unique to the set whatever but to me, the only really, really overall, I'm not that excited about Copenhagen. If Copenhagen ends, ends up being borderless, I think it's not that cool. I think there's so many duplicates, so many trash stickers. Even some of the new stuff is really ass. I'm not excited um, about Copenhagen overall. I'm really, really not. Um, but I think the one sticker that are going to get people talking about, are going to get people excited, the unique sticker to Copenhagen that would be kind of the, the big uh, kind of chase sticker from the set to me is Lynn Vision. It's got a lot of people talking. Um, I don't really love the text at the bottom how it says Lynn Vision, but obviously people are saying it's like the Walmart I buy power or whatever it's got a cool logo you know it's a team it's a interesting team um this i could really see the one being that people go for especially if again if lynn vision doesn't get future borderless stickers or anything like that if this one does end up being unique to me this could be the sticker to watch out for this could be the money maker from this set i'm sure it's going to be really expensive right off the bat um but depending on where prices go or where the demand is for copenhagen overall i could see this one really exploding in value um over the next couple of years again if it remains unique we don't know what's going to happen in shanghai or in the future or whatever um, but at least for right now with it being unique, it's going to be the one I'm going to be keeping my eyes closest on. But I really love these top four stickers, Lin Vision, Mavi Star Koi, Nine Pandas, and Cloud9 as the big four stickers that I could potentially see myself putting some money into. But that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. Hopefully, catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.